Basement Collective. Stay tuned for our 1500 point battle report with Scary. <laughs> hey Basement Collective, thank you for checking out another Basement Collective battle report. Today we have a special guest made his journey up north. All the way. The Great White North of <laughs> Sudbury. Right north. He's also in North, which is also white, but yeah, in Barry. Technically. For a 1500 point battle report, we're doing Dark Ayaldar, can't speak. Drukari. Drukari, my apology. It's okay. Facing off against the fish people of the 41st millennium, Tau. In this awesome battle report, we're going to be doing a new Maelstrom of War mission from Chapter Approved. Stay tuned for the Army Showcase. So, Skari, what did the Jukari bring for us today? Ah, well, the Dark Kin have brought many painful things. Um, okay, so we have a battalion detachment, pretty straightforward, and leading the army as Warlord, we have Urien Rakarth. I haven't really used him in 8th edition, really looking forward to trying him out. He has the uh, Coven Warlord trait, so at the beginning of every turn, uh, he regains D3 wounds that he's lost, so I'm excited about trying him out. Um, then we've got Archon Skari, who's been commissioned by Urien Rakarth to come and get more fish people meat for his flesh machines. So if you guys don't know that story, check it out. It's part of the fluff. It's kind of cool. Uh, he's got an Urgul with him, getting excited about the lower point cost on the Court of the Archon models. Um, then for the elite choices, I have the Grotesques, just three grotesques, run-of-the-mill, nothing special. And I have a Beastmaster um, who has his Beastmaster's Scourge. Moving on to troops, we have one unit of Cabalite Warriors with a Blaster and a Sabrite, one unit of Cabalite Warriors with a Sabrite with a Power Sword, and ten racks. Simply racks. They're here to rack stuff. And then we've got the fast attack choices. We have twelve Razor wing flocks and a giant beast pack, and we have five scourge with quadruple dark lance. Um, then for heavy support, we start with the Talos down here, who has a, um, a stinger pod, and the pride and joy of the fleet, the Tantalus, who sadly went up in points, but he looks cool. So I thought I'd bring him in as well. And to dedicate transport stuff, we have the good old. Venom with dual splinter cannon. So that is 1,500 points in total, uh, rocking the six battle points for the battalion. Looking forward to taking some prisoners. And for the 1,500 points of Tau, I am also running a battalion for the six command points. <laughs> We're getting some early blood, early first blood going on in there. And there goes Cadre. <laughs> so let's start off with uh, troops. We got three 10 man strike teams with uh, DS8 uh, tactical support turrets, they're combining words. And those are running the missile pods. And of course, they all have pulse rifles. And then we'll go towards uh, fast attack now. We got two six man squad of Pathfinders with their pulse rifles and marker lights. And we got some elite. We got two. These are not storm surges. These are ghost keels. That's the word I'm looking for. And they're running the fusion loadout. So they got their heavy fusion gun as well as the two fusion on the top. And they, of course, have their stealth drones with them. And then for HQs, they got a commander with four fusion guns with two marker lights accompanying him. And of course, Cadre Fireblade. And then the big guy, the storm surge in the back. And he is running a pulse driver cannon with burst cannons, as well he has the advanced uh, weapon system that gives him an extra AP on his guns. He has the shield, the shield, which gives him a four plus invul, as well as velocity track, which gives him plus one to hit with units with fly. Uh, these guys as well have target lock. If they fire all their guns at their same target, they ignore move and shoot penalties. So that is 1,500 points of Tau. And for the mission, we rolled off. We were playing Recon. It's the new Maelstrom out of chapter approved. And this one is the interesting one out of all of them, most I'd say. So you have to divide your force into three equal number of units. So 
Uh, I had 10. How many did you have in your? 12. So 12. Three of four. So he has three forces of four units, and I have two of three, one of four, and we choose one, and that is the one we deploy. Yeah, so we pay, did randomly determine. Yeah, we randomly determine. Well, yeah, we don't choose one. Yeah, you do randomly determine. And that's the one that starts the game. And then all the other units come in on turn one. At the end of the movement phase on a three plus, they come in in your deployment zone six inches from any board edge. And at the turn two, they come in automatically. And if they have any deep strike abilities, they can use those as well. We did roll hammer and roll for deployment. And Skari chose to deploy on that side and the tower getting this side for deployment. And for objective wires, we got three right here, five right here, one right here, six right here. Uh, that is two, and that is four. And that is what the board looks like. So let's go ahead, Scary, and roll for seeing which one of our forces come in. So okay. you can roll first, sir. So um, I've got three forces. My first force is my Tantalus with uh, Uri and Rakoth, three Grotesques, and 12 Razor Wing Flux. Okay, so that'll be on a roll of a one or a two. On a three or four, I will have my Tantalus, my Scourge, a unit of Cab Light Warriors with a Power Sword, and the Beast Pack Master. And then on a five or six, I will have Archon Skari, a unit of Rax, a Nurgle, a Venom, and, oh, that's a five-man one, sorry. Yeah. Cool, ready? Yep. Okay, so, Let's see what deploys. My Tantalus, Uri and Rakoth, the Grotesques, and the Razorwing Flock. And for my deployment, so one, I got three Strike Squads and Cadre Fireblade. Two, I got the Storm Surge and two Pathfinder Squads. And three, I got the Commander and the two Ghost Keels. One. So Cadre Fireblade and the Strike Teams are being deployed. So I will get to place the first unit since Skari did get to choose the table side. And we'll be back after the deployment. For deployment. So I deployed three squads of fire, a strike, not fire, we're a strike team now. Right here, right here, with Cadre Fireblade in the middle. And we'll go over to Scar's deployment. Okay, so I um, used a, a big screen of Razorwing Flux um, to prevent any nasty commander deep striking stuff. And then I put my Tantalus in the backfield with Uri and Rakarth sitting in it, nice and pretty. Uh, while my Warlord is embarked, all Drukari units get to use his leadership, which is pretty cool, which mm -hmm. helps my raise wings. And I've put the three Grotesques in the webway using the new um, stratagem from uh, Chapter Approved. Nice. So uh, speaking of Chapter Approved, we both got Warlord traits now and uh, Relics. So my commander has the Relic that... Uh, I can choose to reroll one hit, wound, or charge roll, I think it is, mm -hmm. once per game, or a unit within six of them can use that. And any time I use a command point or my opponent uses a command point on a six, I get an additional command point. And uh, he's going to know the Warlord trait that allows him to advance and still fire weapons as if he didn't move. And for you, sir? So I have the um, Coven Warlord trait, which means that at the beginning of every my player turns, Uri and Rakarth will regain D3 wounds. Nice. And you, you get a relic too? Uh, yes, yeah, so it's the Parasite's Kiss, so Archon Skari has a pistol that's a two-shot pistol, hits on twos, wounds on twos because it's poison, and it's a damage two pistol that is AP minus two. Nice. Yeah. So that is that, and that is deployment. Uh, because Skari did put his HQ in the Tantalus, he did finish deploying first, otherwise I was going to. So he does get plus one to the roll. Okay, and may the best Dark Eldar win. Yeah. <laughs> uh, three, no, two, two. lies. I am going to try and seize if you want to go first, though. Yes, I would okay. like to go first, sir. Okay, I still get another roll. Let's go, Uri and Rakarth. Hiya! No, that is a six. Five. That is a five. So it will be <clears throat> Tau turn one. I like it. And just to remember, before we go into turn one movement, uh, we got objectives, so scour the skies, kill a flyer. Yes. Possible. Uh, defend objective two, which is not right there. It's back here. Back there and all the way over there. And finally, secure objective four, which is right here, which is totally possible for me to get. And that is the turn one objectives for Tau. Also, big shout out to our main man, Frank at Piazza Productions. We currently got our new Basement Collective scoreboard, and I guess you can call it. So we have uh, 
turn counters here, command point counters for each team, for each person, so, I, so you can count you and your opponents just to make sure everybody's on the same page. So Scarry's got five to my six. You got the turn counter and as well victory point counter. So we're thoroughly impressed with what Frank did with this and we are excited to use them. And you, as you can see, reinforcements did arrive for the Tau. Actually, all my stuff came on the table except for the two Pathfinder squads. So we could have used them, but you know, I'm not complaining that my, some of my heavy hitting stuff came on. Actually, most of my heavy hitting stuff's short range, especially the Commander and the Ghost Keels. And the Commander could have went up in there, but he didn't because he just would have sacrificed himself by himself. But other than that, so these guys came on here. And the commander came over on objective four because I got the card. And the strike team just moved up to be able to shoot at the razor flock. So that is the movement. Now onto the tau phase. Shooting phase. And after shooting, so we already learned that the two ghost keel and the commander were out of range to shoot at anything. Everybody else put the shots into the razor ring flocks and managed to kill a good number of them, eight of them actually. And that was the end of that. Scar did choose to use two command points to automatically pass the morale test. At the end of my turn, I do score objective four. I will toss defend objective two. So it'll be one point to zero going into turn one for the Drukari. And Scarry is going to draw his cards. He gets to draw three cards. Okay, so defend objective one, which I believe is back in that corner. Well, in that corner back there by the Tantalus. Mission critical objective. So I'm looking for objective four, which, which is, right, is here. right here. And Witch Hunter. Secure objective four, which happens to be right there. That one, sir. You do draw again, right? What? Right. Yeah, you draw up to three. Cool. And oh, we, do we play if we, we draw? Normally I don't play, but who cares? Go ahead. Oh, okay. Well, I, I don't mind keeping that one if you want. No, no. Go ahead. It's fine, man. It's friendly oh. game. So, we'll be back after the movement phase of Jukari. Movement. At the end of the movement phase, the Dark Eldar has advanced. The only thing that didn't come in for Scario was his Talos and... Scourge. Scourges. Everybody else came in. So, we got one squad of Cabalite Warriors over here. And then the Rax with the Venom with Scari and... Uh, Urgul. The uh, Beast Pack Master, the Cavalier Warriors, then the Razor Wings move back here. My Webway Strike was the Grotesques coming out of the Webway over there. Uh, Uri and Rakoth popped out here, and uh, the, ta the Tantalus kind of stayed there. Awesome. So we'll move on to the shooting phase. Turn one, Drukari. And the shooting phase. So what happened during the shooting phase, Ascari? So um, I, tr I tried to take out the drones. Uh, one survived though. I yep. shot him with the venom and the cavalite warriors. Mm -hmm. And then my tantalus opened up and killed seven of the fire warriors that were over here, which is going to be forcing a morale check as well. Yep. And uh, yeah, that's it for shooting. And at the end of the charge phase, he attempted to charge his grotesques. Nope. What are these again? Uh, yeah, the grotesques. The, the grotesques, that was correct, into the commander. And the commander managed to get one shot off and actually dropped a guy. And then he failed this charge, also burning a command point to also try to get in there and got worse results. So that is the end of Drukari turn one. I do have to do a bravery test. Oh, sorry, I'm missing something. Oh, I got two of them. So my, so they are leadership six, so I don't roll a six. And I got a five, I'm good there. And these guys are leadership seven, I think. So I'm looking for a, a six, I think, for Bonnie Knife Ritual, which is five, which will mean that'll be the whole squad, which will also be first blood. So at the end of turn one, that'll put it one to one. And he does have defend one, so he just has to hold it for my turn to get an additional two points. Going into Tau turn two. So I still have Scour the Skies, Kill a Flyer. Uh, no prisoners, kill the unit, which is possible. And, whoa. I threw that card on the ground. Secure objective five. Secure objective five, which is right here. Is a, right, that's a good objective as well. Mm -hmm. So we'll go on to the movement phase for Tau. Turn to the movement phase. So everybody over here shuffled a bit over. These two advanced just to get closer to his army. Uh, the drone stayed right there just to be a pain for when Scarry comes to objective four. And the commander moved over here to go after the grotesques. Uh, one squad of Pathfinders came in automatically due to the mission right there, and one squad came in over here. 
So that is the movement phase. We'll move on to the shooting phase. And I did forget my relic because I get that now. Uh, the pure something chip. I get to roll three dice and Scarry did use three abilities to spend command points. And on six, I got two of them. I get command points back. And after the shooting phase, we managed to commander and the Pathfinders made quick work of those grotesques. And the only other shot we can do was the Storm Surge into the Venom and the big cannon missed and uh, missiles did two wounds to hit. Other than that, we have no charge or assault because we're town. So we go to the end of the turn. I do score two victory points. I did score no prisoners kill a unit and I did score secure objective five. I will still keep Scour of the Skies since he does have a bunch of flyers. So that'll put me up to three victory points and Scary as well got defend objective one over there. So put him up to three victory points as well. So three, three going into Drukari, turn two. Now his card's over here. I have two in play. I've got uh, secure critical objective four. Mm -hmm. So if I take it away from the drone, I get D3 points and secure objective four. So this could be worth four points for me. Mm -hmm. And I have to draw one more, um, which I shall. And it is no prisoner, so kill something this turn. Awesome. If I kill three things, I get more points. I just realized I made a mistake because I forgot he had that card, leaving a drone there. It's not the smartest. Oh well. We'll go into Jakari, turn two. Now that the movement phase, uh, the Talos came in right here, six inches from this table edge, and the Tantalus, bike, Tantalus moved over. Over here we got the Rax and the Cabalite Warriors there. They advanced. The Venom came over here and picked up those Cabalite Warriors. And then the Packmaster and the Razorwing Flux just moved up to go after this drone. And back here we have the Scourgers coming in. That is the end of the movement phase. Okay. So shooting the Tantalus shot at the Storm Surge and peeled off six wounds. <clears throat> the Talos Pain Engine shot at the Stealth Drones right there and managed to kill one. Over here we got four Lances on the Scourges and they managed to get one wound through on him and Scarry rolled a one for damage and he chose to reroll it and reroll it to a one. Correct. So he's down to 13 wounds left and uh, they shot a Carbine over at the Pathfinders and failed to do anything. And that is the shooting phase. So we'll go ahead and uh, charging phase. Uh, these guys charged into him and bounced off and I bounced off back. <laughs> and same thing happened over here except he killed one of my guys. So Scarry, at the end of your turn, you score def hold objective four. So secure objective four, and I have more models there. So mission critical objective to secure it for D3. Three points. Three points. So that'll put him up to seven points to my three points. And I do have to do a morale test on this drone. And if I fail this morale test, Scarry gets an addict additional victory point, and I pass there. And those guys can't possibly fail. So we go into Tau, turn three. Three. I still scour this guys. Secure objective three, which is all the way back here, as well as secure objective six, which is right there. I can live with that. We'll be back at the end of Tau turn three. And for the movement phase, the these guys retreated over here. The drone retreated right here, and the commander moved over here to try to go after the scourges. And then we move over here. This squad of strike team did Congo line in advance to get objective three, which we needed. And these guys did stay put there. Other than that, that is about, oh, I lied. The ghost kills moved up to there to secure objective six and shoot at the Tantalus. So we'll go into the Tau shooting phase. The end of the shooting phase, uh, I wasn't aware this was toughness eight. So these guys did absolutely nothing to him, unfortunately. However, we shot Margaret lights at him and the storm surge was ma managed to peel off ten wounds with his destroyer 11. missiles. And then, oh yeah, and then the yeah yeah. And then the com other shots from the missile pods managed to peel another one off. These guys shot at the Talos pain engine and did nothing as either. Over here, the combined shot of the commander as well as the missiles from the forty-six missiles from this took away the scourges, and that'll get me all my victory points this turn. I got secure objective three. I got secure objective six, and I did kill the Scourges for uh, the Skies. Put me up to six to Skari seven. We'll go into Jukari turn three. So I've got no prisoners. Yeah. Supremacy. Okay. Defend six, which is in the middle. Awesome. So we'll be back at the end of the movement. 
And for the movement, Talus moved up to go after the ghost kills, I take it. Tantalus moved over here while staying within three inches of that. Uh, where did the HQ go? Oh, it came right behind the, there. Venom moved out. The Cabalite Warriors moved up. The Racks, did they advance? No, they just moved They just up. moved, and then over here, the Flock and the Beastmaster moved up as well. We'll go into the shooting phase. Shooting, Sword. Tantalus did not very do very good this turn. He missed a bunch and then failed to wound on the Storm Surge, which was good for me. Mm -hmm. Other than that, uh, Talos shot at this guy. He lived. The... Uh, uh, Orion Rakos killed one drone. Killed one drone. And then over the here, the Cabalite Warriors right there managed to kill that final marker jump. We'll go into charge phase. Cool. And after the charging phase, the Rax and the Talos charge here. Uh, they managed to bring both of the ghost skills down to six. The flock did obliterate the awesome. pathfinders over there. And other than that, I did manage to take one wound off of the Talos and overwatch from the ghost kills. And what points did you score this turn, Star? So I am I have I killed a unit. Yep. Uh, we just have to make sure to take a uh, uh, morale for that drone. Well, morale for that drone, I do indeed have to take morale, and I pass. Okay. So I just get one point for that. Yep. And I do have supremacy for D three points. Nice. So two. Yep. So there's a two point supremacy. So I got three points, and I do have defender objective six. But I'm going to. Uh, yeah. No, I'm going to. I'm going to keep it. So you go up to ten to six, going into turn four of the game. So I get to draw three cards this turn. I got secure objective one, which is all the way over there. Psychological warfare, make you fail a leadership test. And secure objective six. And the shooting phase. So everything over here shot and we managed to kill a bunch of racks, but not enough to kill the squad. And we did manage to kill the Talos pain engine. Through, that's combined shot of everything over here. And we killed one guy over there. For objective point wise, I did secure objective six. Uh, racks are immune to morale because it's turn four Dark Elder. I will discard objective one, putting me up to seven points. Discard is 10 victory points. Going into Jukari turn four. So I have defend objective six. Defend objective six, okay. And I get defend objective four, mm -hmm. which is the one back there. And hold the line. Okay. Okay. So Scari moved his three units back here for hold the line. The Venom moved up to right here. The Orion Rekard. Orion Rekard moved up as well. He's the Warlord. Yep, and we got the Beastmasters going over here for defend objective. No, so I lied. Defend is over there. Defend objective the right there. And the Razorwing Flock are going for the Commander. Cool. And shooting. So we got the Oricon Rackheart and the Archon. Archon shot the pistols at this ghost kill and he lived through that. And the Venom and the Cabalite Warriors inside shot at the Pathfinders, killing three. The Tantalus shot at the Storm Surge and did six more wounds to him, bringing that to seven. And that was about it for the shooting. On to charging. Rackheart charged and took four wounds on Overwatch but managed to get in there and did one wound to this Storm Surge and then Archon Scari also charged and did one wound to that Ghost Kill as well. So that will be the end of Jukari turn four and Scari scores. Hold the line Hold and I am currently defending both of these. Six and four. So we'll go now into turn five. Turn five. And I would have tossed Psychological Warfare, yeah. I just forgot to yeah, mention that. Yeah. And I just draw three cards there, secure objective one which is all the way over there again, lovely. Uh, defend objective three, which is right here. And domination. Yeah. That is that. Domin so I do apologize, I did skip the moving. However, Scurry does have to leave because he came down for something and we we're just a uh, secondary thing on the trip. So we're gonna go ahead here and uh, see what happens. So movement shooting after basically at the end of that, I killed the Venom, Venom. the Tantalus, the Homunculus, Homunculus the, Warlord. the Warlord, and uh, Scar is left with one wound. And I got two Cabalites. And he got, and he got two Cabalites left here. Other than that, I scored no objective. Scar is going to win the game on objectives. Yeah. He did get these two, putting his score up to 14 to 8. Right. So and we'll then, go. Yeah, cool. Yeah, and we're going to Jukari, turn 5. So at the end of turn five for Jukari, 
we went ahead and uh, did everything at once just because there wasn't much left. Archon Skari shot in... Sorry, I missed Archon Skari. The Cabalite Warriors and the Beastmasters went to shoot and kill the commander. Archon Skari then charged the Ghost Keel and got obliterated by the Fire Warriors. And uh, the Cabalite Warriors charged into the drone, did nothing. Other than that, Skari did obje get Objective 6. And he does have Line Breaker, so... Uh, oh, not two. Line Breaker yet, sorry. Objective 2. Yep. And we will roll to see if the game ends. Cool. Does the game end? It does. So at the end of the game, it's going to be Line Breaker for Skari for 15 to 8. Good game, sir. Good game. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming up. It was really fun. I really love you guys here at the Basement Collective. You're awesome. Make sure you check all the links down below for all the cool stuff that you guys do. Awesome. Exactly. As well, make sure you comment on this video to be entered into our weekly giveaway. And uh, we'll take it. We would do a post game show, but uh, we have to end it right now. But thank you very much for checking us out, guys, at the Basement Collective. And Kevin will let you know who won last week's giveaway. The winner for this week's giveaway is a comment you see on your screen right now. Congratulations to Albin P. As always, be sure to comment to be entered into next week's giveaway to win some of our swag. Thank you for watching and keep on wargaming.